the Aral Sea. What the heck is the Aral Sea, you may ask? Well, we are about to tell you everything you need to know and more. The Aral Sea is located on the border of Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, which are two countries in Asia, at a location of 45 degrees north and 60 degrees east. For a long time, the Aral Sea provided tons of ecosystem services to all of its surrounding communities, such as the fishing stocks and also the preservation of the surrounding water and soil equality. In the early 1900s, it was, worth, it was the world's fourth largest lake. It was able to regulate its volume and salinity levels due to the two rivers that steadily flowed into it. The two rivers are called the Sardaria River, which is on the east of the lake, and the Amudaria River, which is in the south of the lake. But in 1918, the USSR made a horrible decision. They decided that they wanted to change the route of fresh water from rivers to use for irrigation. The USSR wanted to increase its production of cotton, a product they considered to be white gold. While it is arguable that this benefited many people immediately, since the influx of irrigation provided millions of jobs and made the irrigated areas rise from 6.4 million acres to 15.9 million acres, it has had very negative impacts long term. The USSR knew it would have negative impacts on the lake, but they thought that the huge increase in agriculture would outweigh the negative aspects of the shrinking lake. Because of this, the construction of irrigation canals began in the 1930s. Irrigated areas in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan increased more than twofold and positively impacted citizens in those countries since millions of people now had jobs. However, because these rivers were being diverted for irrigation, the Aral Sea began to shrink in the 1960s. More water was going to land instead of the sea. By 2005, the Aral Sea drastically changed. It lost over half of its surface area and 75% of its volume. Though cotton production doubled during this time due to an increase in irrigation, these canals were poorly constructed, and as a result, water leaked and evaporated, leading to significant amounts of water being wasted. Even more, the cotton monoculture posed several disadvantages for this region. Monoculture, which means cultivating one crop in a given area for a given amount of time, can lead to the depletion of nutrients, thus weakening soil structure. With poor soil structure, the soil will not be able to support healthy plant growth. Farmers use fertilizers to combat this disadvantage of poor soil structure, which poses further issues that will be explained later. Monoculture can also lead to the spread of pests and diseases, which generally occurs given the usage of chemicals. Backtracking a bit, by 1987, due to diverted water, the lake had split into two parts. These parts were the North Aral Sea in Kazakhstan and the South Aral Sea in Uzbekistan. By 2009, the Aral Sea had lost more than half of its surface area. Because of this, most of the lake's bottom was now exposed to air, leading to many detrimental dust storms. A dust storm occurs when a strong wind blows the loose sand and dirt from a dry, exposed surface. This caused some major issues. The dust that was blown up from the exposed bottom had tons of chemicals from the nearby agriculture that had settled to the bottom of the once water-filled lake. These chemicals, such as organochlorine, PCBs, and dioxins, were found in the Russian-made pesticides that were used on the cotton fields. There were also lots of eutrophication occurring due to fertilizers being used in farming near the two rivers, the Sirdaria and the Amudaria, and so the fertilizer chemicals ended up in the river which flowed into the Aral Sea. To be clear, eutrophication can only occur when water is present, and dust storms can only occur when water is not present. These dust storms were also causing detrimental issues to the health of locals who lived near the Aral Sea. Locals started to get diseases from the air and water pollution, such as acute respiratory diseases, waterborne infectious disease such as typhoid and hepatitis A, as well as tuberculosis, malnutrition, anemia, liver and kidney disease, and this caused a huge amount of tragic deaths. Infant mortality rates increased from 2.5% of all live births in 1950 to 10% of all live births in 1996. And in some parts, such as Karakal, Pakistan, infant mortality rate is over 10% of all live births. Other negative effects of the Aral Sea disaster include low birth weight in infants, growth retardation, delayed puberty and psychoneural retardation, which are all more prevalent than usual. On top of all of these serious issues, once the flow of fresh water was taken away from the Aral Sea, the salinity increased monumentally. This made the previously very successful fishing industry collapse and it led to the unemployment of 60,000 people. This is BBC World News and I'm Anna Diffley with the headlines. Here's an update on the progress and plans for the improvement of the Aral Sea. 
Today, and for some time, the Aral Sea has been a deserted landscape with rusting ships scattered all over. This is something that definitely needs to be altered. The Aral Sea Basin Program was established in 1993 in an effort to protect and rehabilitate the Aral Sea. After substantial planning that started in 1988 by the Soviet government, the program was officially launched by the World Bank, United Nations Development Program, and the United Nations Environment Program. Five nations have cooperated to rehabilitate this area, including Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Turkmenistan. Overall, the program has four objectives. Stabilize the environment of Aral Sea Basin, rehabilitate disaster area around the sea, improve management of international waters of Aral Sea Basin, and to build the capacity of institutions at regional and national levels to advance the program's aims. Several components of the program, which are targeted in order to reach the said targets, include a public awareness component to educate general public to conserve water and to accept burdensome political decisions, a transboundary water monitoring component to create basic physical capacity to monitor transboundary water flows and quality, and so on. We hope that the Aral Sea will continue these improvements in the future so that lives can be saved and industries can succeed again.